there's so little that we can actually film. The line for guest services looks like it's about three hours long. To think that we dropped another additional $200 to come back today, <gasps> uh, because we really wanted to do not some justice and make sure that we gave full coverage. I don't know how we're even gonna finish this up. Flashback. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Now, today we are taking a little break from our normal Las Vegas content and instead we're here in Buena Park, California to visit Knott's Berry Farm for their annual Boysenberry Festival. That's right, we are here for a culinary experience of boysenberry treats and boysenberry delights. We're gonna try and eat as much of the boysenberry food offerings as we possibly can and show you everything along the way. So stick around for this episode of James, James and Paul, Paul Try It All. For more food and fun in Las Vegas and other fun destinations such as this visit to Knott's Berry Farm, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell to stay up to date with our weekly episodes. We have a new episode every week with much more coming. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind when visiting the Boysenberry Festival, they offer two options. You have the tasting card, which will give you a lanyard and a card. If you go with the Boysenberry Bundle, you will get a QR code here on the Knott's app. With the QR code, you just scan it at each individual spot and you enjoy your boysenberry treat. Do not make the same mistake we did of walking around the park figuring out how to redeem it. Let's go check out our first boysenberry item. It's gonna be right there in Camp Snoopy. I am ready for some breakfast. I've never had boysenberry breakfast sandwich though. This should be interesting. Okay, so that did not work for the boysenberry breakfast sandwich. Unfortunately, it's just not in our cards today. All right, friends, uh, we finally have our first food item of the video. Uh, after the breakfast sandwich was not available at the time, we decided to go with the elk burger with boysenberry barbecue and fried onions. Now, admittedly, as soon as Paul walked over here with the burger, I'm like, that's a freaking cheeseburger. There's nothing else on it. But he's like, oh, no, it's on the bottom. And the, So there is the fried onions and boysenberry a little fried, on the bottom. A little bit of fried onion and boysenberry barbecue sauce on the bottom there. But and it is your standard burger. Now, it is an elk patty, which I've never had elk before, mm -hmm. so this will be interesting. That being said, let's tuck into this burger before it gets cold. I'm gonna go for the first bite, if you don't mind. You go for the first bite. All right. You sat here waiting for it. I <laughs> mean, you went and stood in that horrible line, which, <laughs> oh, I'm biting, why don't you talk about that? So, obviously, when it comes down to the service and operations, just be patient is the one thing that I can say about the Boysenberry Festival. They are a little short-staffed. How is that elk burger? I actually say it's pretty flavorful. The meat itself is really good. Mm. I do like the flavor of elk. It's a little bit gamier, probably is the word I'm looking at. It's, it's, it's somewhere closer to maybe like eating like buffalo or lamb. It has that little bit of a stronger mm. bite to it. Cheese is more, melted perfectly. I wish there was more barbecue sauce. I wish there was more fried onions, but all in all, not bad. I don't know if I would score this super high. I'm gonna go standard, middle of the road. Let's do 2.5 on that guy. I'd probably say maybe about a two, to two. be honest. All and right. here's why. Elk itself, and I've heard this from many people, can be pretty dry. Yes. And this burger is a little bit drier than a beef burger. It's delicious, it has great flavor, but it's still a dry burger. Right, no, absolutely. You definitely need more barbecue sauce. You than do I need a little bit more barbecue sauce. I'm not getting too much boysenberry no. out of this. It's a great idea in theory. Um, we're gonna finish our burger though, and we're gonna enjoy our punch, and then we're gonna be back with more delicious food shortly. Look at this wood carving of Godzilla. That is uh, epic. I wish I had the money and the space for that. And there's an amazing frog right next to it. Next up, we are on the hunt for something that I'm really excited about, poisonberry barbecue chicken wings at the Wilderness Dance Hall. Let's go check them out. Next up on our tasting of all the delicious boysenberry goods here, we got some boysenberry booze. Now they have a like a tasting flight. So we're gonna start with number one. And, and these, and the, this was like what, $35 for this tasting about flight? 35 bucks for the tasting. Uh, we're starting off with the boysenberry lager <laughs> by Brewery X in this case. It's a 4.2% ABV. Let's give it a shot. I love a lager. That's delightful. I can sip on that all day long in a hot summer day. Oh my God, that's so good. It's so good. It's not like obscenely sweet or boysenberry-ish. No, it's, you, it has the hint of boysenberry. It's almost like a LaCroix of boysenberry. Um, it's good. I would, I'd, 
I'd get a full glass of that. So moving on to number two now, we've got the uh, Boysenberry West Coast IPA by Carl Strauss Brewing coming in at a whopping 7.6 AP, ABV. Uh, now, Carl Strauss is obviously yeah. a well-known brewery, especially in California. I'm excited to try this one. Um, I'm not, you know, full disclosure, neither of us are normally IPA no, guys. No, no. It's never normally our choice. Let's see how this one fares. Number two. You taking the first taste? Uh, that's, what looks, that's what it looks like. Pinky up. You're not going to like that. I'm already kind of dreading this because I don't like IPA. It tastes like an IPA. Specifically, it tastes like an IPA from Carl Strauss, who in my mind does some very bitter IPAs. Yeah, you can see the look on Paul's face. The funniest thing is I love bitter flavors. Yeah. I am the type of person that drinks my coffee black, but IPAs just leave a little bit too much on the tongue that, yeah. It's definitely a bitter IPA. The boysenberry flavor though, in my opinion, is a little lacking. I wish yeah. it came through a little bit more. Um, no. Moving on to number three now. We've got Angel Cities. Uh, boysenberry shortbread cookie with a 5% ABV. It smells good. All right, that's a little bouquet. Much better. Ooh, ooh, you do get oh, that. that smell good. You do really get a shortbread cookie type flavor to it. it is almost that kind of like flowery, almost yeast, not yeasty, because it's not a cookie, but no, like. No, but it's, But you know what I mean, like that doughy flavor yep. to it. That's not it's, bad. It's almost like a shortbread cookie aftertaste. Right. And that is amazing. Again, not sweet. All right, now coming on to what I think is going to probably be both of our favorites. This one's not a beer. This is a boysenberry mule. Okay, now I'm getting a little envious and I kind of want to try it. Oh, that's good. Now that is just pure sweetness though. You get a little bit of ginger from the, the ginger beer, ginger ale maybe. It's probably ginger beer. The boysenberry flavor is strong though. You know what this reminds me of? A boysenberry punch? Yes, you took the words out of my mouth, but what I was going to say is it reminds me of a boysenberry punch with a little bit of extra tang to it. Right, because and of I the ginger. It. Exactly, because of the ginger. Why don't they put ginger ale in your boysenberry punch here? Well, I kind of want one just by myself because that is really good. That's my favorite. All right, so let's go through these real quick. Uh, number one, the lager by Brewery X. What, what are you rating it? I am probably going to rate the lager a four because that was delicious. Yeah. With a little hint of boysenberry. Yeah. I also want to give it a four. It was good. Solid lager, nice little... Nice little tinge of boysenberry, mm -hmm. not overpowering. Um, moving on to Carl Strauss, the West Coast IPA. Number two, what are you going to rate it? If I had my own personal rating, I would probably give it a one. However, knowing that there are people in our audience that love IPAs, yes. I will bump it up to three because if you like IPAs, this is a great beer. I'm in agreement. I'm also going to give it a three. I don't hate IPAs, but they're never my first choice. Number three, we've got the Angel City Boysenberry Shortbread Cookie. Uh, what would you rate on that? I would probably, sadly, also give that a three. I'm going to say 3.5 because it's a good beer, you know, and it has that shortbread cookie flavor to it, which really makes it very interesting. But again, wish the boysenberry was a tad stronger. Now, the boysenberry mule is obviously going to be a five for me. Fives across the board. Fives across the board yeah. for that. Yeah, no, absolutely. The boysenberry mule is perfect. Um, I, I, I want a gallon of that. And it's also got more alcohol in it. Yes. So if you, if you want a little bit more alcohol in your beverage, there you go. Now that our bellies are filled with booze, we got some chicken wings. Because what goes better than, than chicken wings with beer? Uh, boysenberry barbecue chicken wings. Yeah. All right, let's. I'm going to go for one of these little guys here. Well, cheers. cheers. I love a barbecue chicken wing. Mm -hmm. You do get a little bit of boysenberry. Yeah, but it's not overpowering with the boysenberry either. No, it still tastes like barbecue sauce. It doesn't taste like it's... Mm -hmm slathered in like boysenberry jam. Those are super yummy. They come in a five piece, which is an odd number for chicken wings in my mind, but it's meant to be in tasting portions. So that way you can enjoy lots of things throughout the festival. And there is so much to try. Oh, it's time for dessert. And we have a boysenberry cobbler. This guy's so cute though. Look at that nice little crumb topping. It's got a nice little crumb topping that looks baked perfectly. I'm excited. I love a cobbler. Look at that rich cobblery goodness there, folks. Oh my God. It jiggles. It does jiggle. Oh, that texture just melts in your mouth. Those boysenberries are perfect. Yep. Oh, it's just... I need more. Right. It, it's got like the consistency of a really good jelly, a really good jam. Yeah. You know, you still get, the little, you get a little bit of seed in there from the boysenberries. The crumb topping is buttery, flavorful, oh, yeah. light. This is actually a really good dessert because it's not super heavy. No, it's not super heavy, but I could totally eat two or three more of these. Yeah, I probably could too. Absolutely. 
Nothing wrong with the boysenberry cobbler. So let's rate the last two things. The chicken wings. Chicken wings. What would you I rate them? I would probably rate those, let's go with a four. And now all in all, I, I think I'm gonna agree with him. Again, a four is good. I, It could stand a touch more boysenberry in the barbecue, but it's original. Yep. Boysenberry cobbler though. Boysenberry cobbler is a five. It's easily a five. Easily a five. Yeah, because you get the fresh boysenberry. It's just cooked perfectly. The buttery crumb topping. Nice portion too. We're gonna finish our chicken wings and then go see what else we can find. Stay tuned. Whee! Oh, here we go. I am moist. Okay, we are back with more boysenberry goodness here. And so we have these amazing boysenberry chicken mole fries. Mm. I'm excited to see what a boysenberry chicken mole tastes like. They smell like. good, I'll give them that. Now if you look, it's shredded chicken. Now these were not part of the tasting menu, but still part of the boysenberry festival. So there, this is an a la carte item, and I believe it's what, 14? It's about $14 plus tax. Okay. Now I have a few thoughts on it, but I'm gonna let you take a bite. Go ahead and take a bite. Like, it looks like, I, mean, I feel like there should be more mole, but let's see what. And James is correct there. I feel like there should be a little bit more mole flavor. I'm not really getting much boysenberry it's, out of this. No, it kind of tastes more like regular mole. It does taste more like regular mole, but it's also not a strong mole. And when you have mole, you want it to be basically a one two punch of flavor. I feel like they might have been playing it safe. I think so. And I feel like flavor-wise, they might have actually been playing it safe by maybe toning down the spice level from what I typically expect. I do agree. I'm not getting much boysenberry. I think we've said in previous videos, if you've watched our channel before, if you put something in the name of a menu item, I expect to be able to taste that immediately. Yes, yes. I mean, it's not a bad option for what it is, but I will say that this is not gonna be a first item that I'm gonna go reaching for. No. Now we will be back with more boysenberry goodness. I got two! Better than I thought. No, 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 not good. I got cocky. Three! Two! No. Thirteen! And that's 30 seconds. Alright. I'm doing okay. Do I get to pick I get to pick one? Yeah. I'm definitely going pie slice. I got a little pie slice! He's so cute! Look at my little boysenberry pie. Okay, so as part of our boysenberry tasting cards, we are trying something that I have always wanted to try here. This is the boysenberry cucumber lemonade. Now, I am a huge fan of cucumber in any drink, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. That is really delightful. There's a nice, bright cucumber flavor that comes through. And the best part is, it's not alcoholic. It's contrasted with the tartness of the lemon. And you do get some boysenberry flavor. So A plus Knox for an amazing non-alcoholic drink. So if you don't drink, this is a great option with your boysenberry tasting card. If you love cucumber like me, it gets a five in my book. And if you do drink, you might want to go with what I got, the boysenberry sangria. So with the orange slice on top as any sangria generally should be. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, that's a good sangria. Um, definitely very bold. The boysenberry flavor is actually very pronounced. Like it's probably the first thing that hits me. Uh, so really, really yummy. Refreshing, especially on a warm day. Now to rate my sangria, I'm gonna give it a solid four. It's good, not amazing. I do wish that perhaps it had a touch more of a sweet liqueur, like some triple sec. Um, just something to add a little bit more depth of flavor. Even the, with the orange slice, I feel like it's missing a little citrus. So it's still really good. I can't, I'm enjoying it, but I, can, I can't give it a perfect score because I don't think it's a perfect set great. All right, folks, we are heading off to get some more food. Uh, we've learned, though, we shouldn't try and do more than one theme park video in one single day. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna eat one more food item for today, but we are gonna come back tomorrow so we can feature more, because honestly, we're just running out of time. So stay tuned, we got more coming, and then even more after that. Uh, as you can see, it is getting dark around us. Uh, that being said, for day one, this will be our final items today. We've got the uh, boysenberry chorizo, ch chorizo chili, chili poutine. poutine. That's a lot. It's a whole lot, lot to say. Right, there's a lot going on there. And the, my immediate thought is, how in the hell does chili make poutine? Because really, that's just chili, that's just chili fries. 
That's just chili fries. It really is, but it, the chorizo maybe. No? No. You know what? There's no chorizo in poutine. You eat poutine all the time. It is beef gravy, cheese curds, and french fries. I am near confident I'm not going to like this one for the sheer fact that I feel like it's mismarketing. That being said, we'll come back to that in a sec. And then we've got the bratwurst with boysenberry slaw, boysenberry sauce. And the boysenberry is in the sausage as well. Oh, it's a boysenberry sauce it's and bratwurst. It's a boysenberry bratwurst, yes. This looks disgusting, but it sounds like it could be good. We'll see. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, I think you should take the first bite. You want to go with this one first? Yes, you take the first bite. All right, I'm going to take the first bite. I mean, you don't like slaw, so no. I, I love slaw. But it's a sauerkraut slaw, so it might be okay. okay. It's a it's, it's it's a split bun, too. Like, it's not even all... It, it's like, a hoagie roll. It's That's dumb. That's dumb. All right, the execution on this is stupid, if you ask me. This is so messy already. Ready? Let me take a bite. Now that he's had the bite, my thoughts are, I love it. I know that's not what you guys thought I was going to say. I fooled you. That's really good, actually. This is super delicious. I love the slaw. It's creamy. It's sweet. What about pasta being tart? The sausage is nice and smoky. You taste a little bit of boysenberry through everything. The roll is stupid, though. Come on, just put it in a freaking like regular like yeah. I have roll to agree without... on the roll. It doesn't I need to be split on both sides. I agree with you on the flavors, actually. A boysenberry sausage, I was curious about, and I think it works. Right, it does I work. I think it does work. It does work really well. I actually am sad that we didn't eat this earlier because this is, might be my favorite thing that we've eaten tonight. I actually would recommend it, except for the, yeah. the execution is just dumb. I think it's delicious. Yeah. Anyway, let's go into the poutine. I'm so sorry to all you Canadians that are watching, but this is not poutine. This, no. this is chili fries. Yeah, it really is chili fries. And, um, um, and as someone who loves poutine the traditional way, right. I this is chili fries. Let's just be honest. Cheers. Well, well, cheers. Let's give it a taste. I don't get any boysenberry. All I'm actually getting is salt. Just a salt bomb. I mean, I'm getting a lot of salt from it, but it also doesn't taste like your standard chili. So as someone that eats a lot of chorizo, this might be the chorizo that comes out of the tube <gasps> and not the typical chorizo that's actually you like You mean the one that melts like, into nothing when yes, you cook it? Yes. Yeah, no, this is pretty awful. It, it does kind of have that flavor. All right, so let's talk about our ratings. Sausage, I'm gonna give it a four. It's, I agree with four. It's really good, it's super flavorful. I think it's the tasty th tastiest thing I've eaten all day, but it's ugly and the execution of it is just not well done. I can't give it a five because I do feel that the roll is charred a little too much. I would totally get this again. And also, one thing I want to point out about this, yeah, it is a fat sausage. Yeah. It's pretty fat. It's a good standard, at least third pound, you know, bratwurst right yeah. there. Um, so again, really good. Moving on to the chili cheese fries. Let's be honest, I can't call it poutine in good conscience. I'm going to go a point five. It is so salty. It is not poutine. No, I get no poutine. boysenberry. That's a point five for me. Nothing more. Wow, you're grading it harsher than I would. Yeah, um, no, I mean, it's not poutine. It is flagrant lover, false advertising. Well, see, not taking that into account as someone who does love chili cheese fries, I would probably give this a three on the basis that if it was marketed as chili cheese fries, then yes. However, huh. I will mark it down to a two on the basis that it's not poutine. If it was marketed as chili cheese fries, I would still give this like a one. It is too salty. That being said, we are almost out of daylight. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back uh, tomorrow with more food stuff. So the video's not over yet. Stay tuned. The next morning. All right, guys, it is day two. We've had some time to recuperate from eating all the delicious boysenberry food yesterday. And we're back here at Knott's Berry Farm to continue this video and show you even more boysenberry goodness. Um, so stay tuned. We've got lots more to show you. As we entered the parking lot an hour before opening, we wondered if the lack of parking staff in the lot was to be an omen of things to come. When the parking attendants did arrive, they didn't even scan our parking pass and just waved us on through. Even worse, cars ahead of us just pushed on through the gates without any attendants in there to manage the lot. What was going to happen today? All right, the park is officially open, so we are going to try for that breakfast sandwich again. Let's hope that this place is open. A few moments later. All right, guys. Bad news and good news. Uh, the bad news is the restaurant uh, that has the boys and berry breakfast sandwich is not open. However, 
there's always a however. Uh, the good news is that it will be open in a few hours and they will have the boysenberry breakfast sandwich at when they open around noon. Uh, so it's gonna be more like a boysenberry brunch sandwich for us at that point. Uh, but so we're gonna come back. We're gonna go find something else to start the day. One hour later. Okay, so one word of warning, if you're visiting Knott's Berry Farm and you have not had breakfast before entering the park, most of the restaurants and establishments don't open till 11 or 12. Now, keeping that in mind, have some breakfast before you get here. A few minutes later. All right, guys, we got our first items of boysenberry goodness for the day. Uh, technically not this one, but we're gonna enjoy that anyway. Uh, so we got the boysenberry sausage, hot honey basil ricotta pizza, uh, and a boysenberry cannoli. How, little, how cute is that little guy? I love the little sprinkles. Yes, absolutely. Sprinkles are amazing. Uh, let's, uh, we also got a barbecue chicken pizza, because frankly, I'm a big barbecue chicken pizza guy, um, so I'm hoping that's tasty. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, why don't you go with that guy first? I'm gonna taste the barbecue chicken. Okay, let's give us a taste. This is stone cold, and they just opened. Yeah. This is absolutely, and like, it wasn't even long for us to like, come sit down. That's very disappointing now, Spare Farm. It's also gummy. Is it? Yeah, give it a taste. Let's give it a shot here. The crust is gummy. Mm. Oh my God, this one too. Stone cold. You're right, the crust is gummy. I don't taste any hot honey. The crust is better on this one though. It's better, but it's still not good. That was not worth waiting for this. No, we waited quite a bit yeah. for that. It's and it's $14 for that slice. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, let's, let's try- Let's hope the cannoli's better. Let's hope the cannoli's better. It's soft. Oh no. Let's, don't tell me that. <laughs> it's super, it's just, it's soft. Boysenberry's okay, but it's still more mostly ricotta. Like you get the ricotta flavor more than boysenberry, a tiny bit of boysenberry flavor, but the shell is just stale and soft. I had high hopes for this. All right, guys, we have basically finished our really bad pizza and our cannoli, um, so it's time to assign some scores to those. So let's start with um, let's start with the barbecue chicken. Um, barbecue chicken would probably get a one from me. I would give it. I'd give it a two. It's a perfectly fine barbecue chicken pizza, but it was ice cold. We got in there, we were in line when they opened the doors. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for that pizza to be ice cold. Now, moving on to the boysenberry item. I Let's, had high hopes for this one. I really wanted it to be good. Right. Um, so first off, as we mentioned earlier in the video, when a restaurant claims a menu item has a certain flavor in it, and you should be able to taste that immediately. Yeah. I tasted no boysenberry. There was no hot honey. There was no hot honey. Um, there was ricotta and basil, yeah. you know, and, and technically there was sausage. Three amazing yeah. little pieces. Um, I mean, it was probably the same sausage that we had yesterday. Right, and it was the absolute gummiest dough ever. I mean, I hate to give something a 0. 0.5. Right, I, I, I don't like being negative, but I that was I always try to find a positive spin on everything, but I do have to give this one a 0. 0.5. No, like, I would probably be more lenient if it was like middle of the afternoon in between lunch and dinner rush, but they just opened. That was all. Um, not to mention that the staff had really no clue what was going on in there. There was no one working in the pizza section of the counter here. Um, it was just poorly ran. So all in all, 0.5. Just because I don't think we can give it a zero, but 0.5. Let's talk about the cannoli. Cannoli was a little soft. Very soft. Uh, I give it a two. Yeah, I'd probably give it a two as well. I have a love of cannolis. We grew up eating them a lot in my childhood because my, my family is Italian. And that was very disappointing. That, like, that cannoli shell was probably filled two, three days ago and has just been sitting since. Um, that's, so, not, that's not comforting to think about. No, it's really not. It was way too soft. So I give it a two. It tasted decent. There was a tinge of boysenberry flavor, so at least at least it met the requirement that if it you put it in the title. It prettier than it tastes. Right. All in all, Prop Shop Pizzeria here at Knott's Berry Farm. Uh, I don't think I'll be returning. No, no. Yeah. Hopefully uh, the next items are going to be better. I hope so. All right, guys, we are on our way back now uh, to seek out that boysenberry breakfast sandwich. Hopefully it will be good. I hope it's there and I yes. hope it's good. Hopefully it's better than that awful pizza. Uh, pizza was not good. I feel like Knott's Berry Farm is really testing me. 
today, but there's been, it's been so much that's just been subpar. I mean, some of it is the food quality is, it's okay. That it's the average score is okay. Some of it's really good. Some of it's just unbelievably bad. Beyond that, there's definitely operations issues here uh, at Knott's. It, it, so much of the staff seems clueless, um, seems poorly trained. That's clearly a management issue. As someone who's worked in the service industry for 20 years, I can say for certainty that when the staff doesn't know what how to answer simple questions, it's not necessarily their fault, it's usually poor training. Uh, that being said, let's continue to head back to the uh, restaurant that serves the boysenberry uh, breakfast sandwich. And which is now our brunch sandwich. Which is now our brunch sandwich, because it's afternoon. Uh, and hopefully, it'll be good. Five minutes later. Update! They're still not open. They told us that they'd be open at noon. Now there's a rope that blocks the entrance. That's new. Uh, so, we'll figure out a new plan. Don't go anywhere. Moments later. And we're back. Yep. Now, with more boysenberry food. Before we even tuck in, I just wanna say, I'm noticing a trend with the savory items. Boysenberry's in the name, but a lot of times, there's not a lot of boysenberry flavor actually in the dish. So I'm hoping these will prove us wrong. I hope so too. I'm not holding I'm, my breath. I'm hoping that this will be delightful and exciting. So we've got the boysenberry, boysenberry chicken tikka masala. Uh, and the boysenberry barbecue pork, uh, excuse me, boysenberry pulled pork over pastel de elotes. Um, let's, why don't you try that? I'll try okay. this, then we'll trade. We'll try and trade. Okay, so let's do a little bit of both. Trade. Now. I already don't like your response, your, your thought there. I mean, the way you sounded. Let's try this one. Yeah. Then we can give our thoughts on both. Okay. I'm gonna say the chicken tikka masala is better. Really? Than the pulled pork. I gotta disagree. Really? I think the pulled pork is better than the chicken tikka masala. I taste a little bit of the boysenberry in the boysenberry barbecue sauce. True. The chicken tikka masala tastes like chicken tikka masala. It does. And I get no boysenberry whatsoever. But I am getting a little bit of spice and a hint of spice from it, right. which is good because after but having no. so much stuff that had no <laughs> spice in it, this is refreshing. I agree. But that is the bare minimum for chicken tikka masala, is to have a little bit of spice. I mean... Like, like that that's what I expect. Like, that's not even going above and beyond. That is the bare minimum. I think with the pulled pork, again, I got a little boysenberry, the corn cake, which is really just cornbread. Not, I am not getting any boysenberry out of this curry. No. Though. The corn cake is just cornbread. Let's, let's be honest. It's nothing special, but it's sweet. It's it buttery. Is, it is sweet, though, and I will give it that. I do like a sweet corn cake. All right, time for ratings. Chicken tikka masala, what you got? Three, middle of the road. I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a one. You cannot call it boysenberry chicken tikka masala and not taste the boysenberry. I would probably give this one maybe a four. Okay. And I'm gonna be generous with that it. That is generous. I was only gonna give it a three I and I like it. I was gonna give it a three, but I will give it a four because when you go for pulled pork, you know what to expect typically. Right. It and is the pork is not dry. No. So it does get points for not being dry pork. It is actually very tender pork. And that, I give this a three. It's not great. It's medi middle of the road pulled pork, but I think it's better than that. This has been an interesting boysenberry festival. Um, lots of ups and downs. I'm curious to see how this continues to go. We still have a few more tastings left uh, that we've purchased, so uh, we'll be back with um, three more items before this video is over. Stay tuned. One hour later. So it seems no matter where we go, where we turn, what we try and do, where we try and eat, uh, the crowds are just unbelievable today. Now, I'm very aware that the, uh, theme parks get crowds, and normally I don't have an issue with that. I'm, I could be a patient person, but the issue I'm finding today is it seems like there's such a breakdown in operations that the crowds are moving slower than normal. Uh, yes. uh, that being said, it's disappointing. It is what it is, um, but hopefully it'll turn around. We've got the boysenberry icy here with a float with uh, it was supposed to be boysenberry soft serve, but uh, I think honestly there was an issue with their soft serve machine. Uh, so they try to get as much of the boysenberry in there as possibly topped off with the vanilla, 
But as I'm trying to sip down the icy, I realize she just put like the ice cream like basically resting on top of the lid, which is really just not working. Like it's not even in the cup. I don't know what's going on today, but I feel like this execution on everything is really, really disappointing. Um, but beyond that, like the icy part tastes fine. Tastes like frozen boysenberry punch. Um, but this is melting everywhere. It's a sticky mess. I give it a two at this point because just the execution was awful. A few minutes later. The whole point of coming back today was to try more boysenberry treats. We've already tried four of the six tastings that we have today. However, we are both at the point where we are hitting a little bit of a wall here. I have to applaud all of you vloggers who do theme parks regularly. This is Disney level crowds without Disney level control. We waited 25, 30 minutes for an icy. For an icy. That's like the quickest thing ever. They literally just come splattering out of the machine. That shouldn't take long. I have no clue how we're even gonna finish this video because there's so little that we can actually film. It's, it's just been kind of a nightmare. And clearly, I think we're probably not the only ones having this issue because the line for guest services looks like it's about three hours long. To think that we dropped another additional $200 to come back today um, and scrapped our previous plans for another video because we really wanted to do not some justice and make sure that we gave full coverage, but I don't know how we're even gonna finish this up. But yeah, to the, all those that you do theme parks regularly and vlog, I applaud you guys because uh, I don't think this is my niche. Um, I'm a theme park lover. This isn't my first time in Knott's. I, I can't lie, I'm, I'm disappointed. Like, it feels like a complete waste of money to have come back today. So, anyone Knott's Berry Farm, if you're watching this video, I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm saddened that there's such a lack of control, a lack of organization, a lack of training, lack of quality. It's been rough. One hour later. So we want to give a quick shout out to Dylan from Theme Park Obsession. Uh, we just ran into him. Uh, um, <laughs> we're big fans of his channel, and if you guys aren't uh, already watching his, uh, watching it, I definitely highly recommend checking him out. Yes, he, he makes does, amazing videos. He has great stuff if you're a theme park fan, from Universal, Knott's, Disney, Six Flags. Six Flags. <laughs> um, he it covers just, it all he does. here in Southern California. Yeah, so and all around, he was a really nice guy. We stopped and chatted for a little bit. He has seen our work, which was which was shocking yeah. too. I was really shocked about that because I'm like, oh my god, you saw our video on play. <laughs> yeah, no, that 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 made me feel pretty pretty yeah. darn decent. And I'm gonna definitely say thank you so much to him for even just chatting with us yeah. about that because thank that really, know. yeah, that really turned our day around yeah, from it did. having it's, a not so good day to. A little bit better one. Yeah, it seems like lately, whenever we take a business trip for this channel, and it seems like we have some sort of moment of serendipity where it's just kind of, when we're starting to feel doubts about what we're doing, something happens that turns it around. Like a few months ago, um, on our first trip back to Vegas after initially launching the channel, we had several different couples stop us and tell us they'd seen our Eiffel Tower video and had booked reservations for the Eiffel Tower restaurant because of that video. And then in January, yeah. we met one that of our was... Vegas icons that we just absolutely adore. I was so shocked about that one. Yes, we met Norma <laughs> Jelly. Uh, she just happened to be visiting the same lounge we were yeah. visiting that night, and she was right behind us in line. And she was filming content that we did not even realize yeah. that we had booked at the same time she yeah. was doing it. It was super fun. She chatted, super nice, gave us some great advice. Um, and then here today, we're at Knott's, and we run into Dylan from Theme Park Obsession. So I, mean, I feel like the universe just keeps pushing us on the right yeah, direction. Telling us to go forward. And I do hope that if you are watching this video, that you know you are, you know, giving it the likes, comments, feedback, if you've and made help it push this us. Far. Yes. If you made it this far through our crazy, crazy day at Knott's, yeah. I really am thankful for for you watching our video. <laughs> we, we love theme parks, but vlogging them is a different story. I think so. <laughs> so we're gonna leave that to pro professionals like Dylan. Yeah. Uh, because I think he does it fantastically. Uh, but we've definitely learned that Vegas is our niche. Dylan, if you happen to see this video, uh, it was great chatting. Uh, that being said, we're about to go do some shopping. Then we're off to chicken dinner. Later that night. We wanted to come back to the hotel room, center ourselves, and, and provide you our final thoughts on the Knott's Berry Farm annual Boysenberry Festival. I was thoroughly impressed with the variety of offerings yes. that Knott's Berry Farm put out this year for their uh, different dishes and beverages. That being said, some of them were amazing. Some of them were okay. Yeah. And some of them were downright bad. We realized that not everything can be a winner. Yeah. Um, and it taste is 
very, very much a personal thing. I don't want to say anything completely negative about it, but I do want to be critical in the fact that we had dinner at their chicken dinner restaurant. And one thing I can say is it is a stark difference between night and day in the quality of the food that is being offered by Knott's Food and Beverage Team. Absolutely. Um, it's amazing the difference in quality that you got at the chicken dinner restaurant compared to what you got inside the park. Now, that's not to say that there wasn't some really tasty stuff inside the park, but when the food was bad, it was bad. And I can accept that not all the restaurants are going to open as soon as the park opens at 10. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really irked me was there was so few options available for food at openings. We walked around half of the park to only to find out that some of these restaurants opened two hours after park opening. We made multiple attempts to to try that boysenberry breakfast sandwich. breakfast sandwich and it was non-existent. Right, and then when we went back to the restaurant after they told us that you know it was going to be open today at a certain time at noon, we went afternoon and there was there was not open. It was we roped off around twelve thirty. Right. Um, yep. So that was really disappointing. Uh, and I feel like if you're going to advertise these items, you know, be prepared to serve them. You know, if you if you aren't serving them at the original spot, have them relocated to a different restaurant. I feel like also too, I noticed a lot of times when certain things were being prepared that you could tell people were being trained right then and there to prepare them at that time. There's no excuse in my mind to train someone how to prepare this special item that people are coming for after the festival started. There's obviously a staffing issue. And I mean, there were too many times where we went to one of the food locations and there was like two people working when there should have been six. And I want to clarify another thing. It's a stark contrast to what we had at the chicken dinner restaurant in terms of boysenberry flavor. Yeah. Anything that was labeled boysenberry at the chicken dinner restaurant, you could taste the boysenberry flavor. Uh, but yeah, so long story short, we had some, we had a few boysenberry things at the boysenberry, at the chicken dinner restaurant. That's a future episode. But that really just highlighted some of the mm -hmm. flaws with some of the execution in the boysenberry festival dish. I feel like some of them might have also played it safe. Way that, too safe. Yes. I feel like there was this, this idea of, oh, that's good enough. Um, but... A lot of the time, it felt like a ripoff. I've been wanting to come to the Boysenberry Festival for years. And that was something that, as someone who travels out from Phoenix to, to come out to this, not only to relive the nostalgia of a day at Knott's Berry Farm, but also to have food that should be knocking it out of the park. And I feel like uh, maybe, maybe, you know, they, they, they feel like, oh, we've got the local population that, that like us, they'll be good enough. Because let's close this out with something positive. What was your favorite thing uh, what was your favorite item for the Boysenberry Food Fest? I will say that my favorite item probably had to have been that Boysenberry Mule that we had. The Boysenberry Mule was that pretty darn fantastic. Mule was really delightful. <laughs> um, I'm going to say the Boysenberry Cobbler we had. That cobbler was really good. Yeah. As I said, knots can knock baked goods out of the bar. Right. Um, we we took some baked goods back to the hotel last night and they were delicious. Oh, yes. Everything from that bakery was amazing. Yeah. We got a bunch of fudge today. The savory items were the biggest disappointment. That being said, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and tell us in the comments section, what are your experiences with Knott's Berry Farm as of recently? Because we've heard all over the map um, that this is not the quality people are used to with Knott's Berry Farm. And I think my husband could also say the same. As someone who grew up here in Southern California and has since moved away, you know, I used to have that fond nostalgia and the memories of going to Knott's as a kid. However, this was not the best impression. Now, before we beat this horse to death anymore, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much, as always, Thank for watching. Yes. It really means the world to us, and you guys are the star of the show. That all being said, one thing left to say. Bye. Okay, so that pizza was something. That's putting it lightly. I am Jane's excited. angry! Rah! Actually, no, seriously, though. I worked in pizza for a long time. That was really bad pizza. Um, I have made so many pizzas in my life professionally and at home, and that was just bad.